Welcome to the WREL Daily Download. I'm your host, Amanda Lamb. In today's deep dive conversation with WREL's investigative reporter, Colin Browder, we're talking about something called swatting, which is essentially making crank calls to 911 through the use of technology that masks the real caller. Crank calls that can have very serious consequences. Colin, welcome to the program. Good to be with you. So first of all, you know, when I think of crank calls, I think of, you know, what I might have done in my adolescence, which is, you know, call and say, you know, your 27 pizzas are on the way or something like that. But, But this is really serious. So can you explain what swatting is for people who don't know and how big of a problem it is? Well, Interestingly, it's been around for many years, uh, and it got it, it got the term swatting because someone would call and they would want emergency personnel. They would want a SWAT team to show up at some particular location for something that they've made up, whether it's you know a shooting, a hostage situation. So a fake emergency. Correct, correct. But that's where the term swatting came from because they wanted uh, a okay. SWAT team to show up. And, and and like like I said, it's been around for for years. A lot of times they would target celebrities because they wanted attention. They wanted to uh, have some notoriety for uh, what they've done. Correct. And then over time, it's also become much more tech savvy as sure. well in terms of they can hide who's making the phone call. Absolutely. And I know the subject of this story was a Fayetteville family who had a really terrifying experience as the result of this. What, what happened to Steve McLeod and his stepson? So they're at home. It's uh, middle of March, middle of the night, 2 o'clock in the morning, and uh, Steve just hears a bang uh, outside his house. And he's like, I, what is that? I mean, he's groggy. He's trying to figure out. And he's a legal gun owner. So he starts hearing people outside. He wonders if someone's trying to break in, if they're trying to, break into his cars outside. So he grabs his gun. He walks into the kitchen. He just peers out the window and he sees movement outside and it's concerning. And then all of a sudden he hears gun, gun. And then he realizes it because they finally identify themselves. It's the actual police outside of his home. And they see him. They see him with, with a gun the gun in his hand, his right. legal gun to protect himself and his family. Correct. And he's not pointing at anyone, but he's like trying to show, look, uh, you know, uh, don't mess with me now. I'm a legal gun owner. He doesn't say anything, but once they identify themselves, because there were no blue lights outside, he literally didn't know who it was until that moment where they say, "Police, put the gun down." So he immediately, he he's a big supporter of law enforcement. That's that's one thing he wanted to make clear. He puts the gun down. He opens his front door with his hands up immediately, moving slowly, opens the uh, the storm door. They're, they start yelling commands at him, get down, get down, keep your hands up. He finally gets down on his knees on his front porch. They handcuff him. Then they carry him out onto, into the driveway. And as soon as they handcuff him, then they just blow by him into his house where he has other family members who are asleep. And his stepson is dead asleep, uh, hadn't heard any of this. He's got headphones on. They break down his bedroom door or break open his bedroom door, flashlight in his face, gun in his face. Wow. Terrifying. Terrifying, absolutely. Uh, and, And then to get into the backstory, the reason all this happens is because there was a 911 call where someone who said that they were the stepson. So they clearly knew the name. Knew the family. Somehow knew. It seems like they were targeted. It it appears that way since they used the name. And uh, and the family at this point, they're still, you know, they have suspicions, but they have, they really don't know who's behind this. So they never did ID the caller? Not at this point. Okay. They have not. They have not. So incredibly tense situation, guns drawn, uh, then they pull out, then they start going, okay, what's happened? So the phone call that came in to 911 said it was this guy, he had shot his mother, and he was going to kill anyone and everyone, including police, if they showed up. So really, the police are responding to what they think is a very 
critical situation, Correct. A, a fatality and the potential danger for them and other people in the home. Correct. And they used a strategy where they parked down the street. They didn't have their blue lights on outside and they kind of came upon the house. I'm not quite sure what their, their strategy was there until they saw the gun and then they identified themselves. Then they burst in and then it, cl- it becomes clear that it's not what they responded to. But again, this could have ended very differently. Oh, absolutely. I mean, guns drawn, guys got a legal gun. And, and in other instances, police officers been shot. Uh, people in the house have been killed in other situations because, again, law enforcement's going in. They think it's a terrible situation that they're trying to trying to deal with. They've obviously got bad information, but then that's where... Looking back on this, this gentleman, uh, Mr. McLeod, is very upset because he's a huge law enforcement supporter, but they start uh, retracing their steps. Thinking about where this call came from. Well, we're going to get back to that after the break with more from WRL's Cullen Browder about what police discovered about this mysterious call. Welcome back to the WREL Daily Download. I'm talking with WREL's Colin Browder about swatting and how it could have had dire consequences for one Fayetteville family. So, Colin, it then they learned that this call originated from inside the police department. So what does that mean? So it could mean a number of things. It could mean it actually came from inside the Fayetteville Police Department or what is more likely, and we don't know yet, uh, is that the call was spoofed. So someone who's tech savvy can, and you've probably seen it with telemarketing calls, you're like, oh, that's a very familiar call. They can disguise where the phone call actually comes from. So it's called spoofing. And someone could have made it appear that the call originated within the Fayetteville Police Department. So they're at the McLeod house. It's clearly not what they responded to. Then they start looking at the number where it came from and they go, wait a second, that came from within our own police department. So the call is almost, it could have been rerouted multiple times. Correct, correct. Right. But Steve McLeod is upset because he feels like they should have... Taken the time to look at that. To look at that and said, you know, that is suspicious before they start, you know, raiding a home. But then the, the question becomes, they think they have this serious emergency. Well, all emergencies are serious, but this emergency... And and how much time do can they afford to take? So it really is, I, I guess, you know, a chicken and egg situation of um, they are doing their job. And, and yet maybe somebody else, maybe somebody within the police department who had the ability could have checked that number. Right. And, and at this point, uh, they are communicating with Mr. McLeod because he's clearly upset over this whole situation, what his family was put through on protocols and Fayetteville PD, according to Steve McLeod, is open to, okay, what could we have done better? Right. How could we change our protocols? Um, you know, this definitely brings to mind, are certain people being targeted? Any indication of that? Not exactly. Uh, like I said, this has been going on for years. And for a good while, celebrities, very well-known people, Justin Bieber, the Kardashians, you know, well-known streamers would, uh, TikTok people, they would get targeted because someone wanted notoriety. We're not seeing any particular pattern uh, pattern, uh, at this point, other than the fact that people keep on doing it. Are there penalties for doing this here and in North Carolina, here in North Carolina and elsewhere? So, just making a false 911 call is a misdemeanor in North Carolina. There's not a specific swatting law, and the, the legislature hasn't seen it necessary to look at it. A lot of other states have passed a law where it's a felony. So Ohio, Wisconsin, Connecticut, and then in other states like California, Texas, I think Kansas, if there's an injury or death that results then clearly the, the, the penalties go much higher. Any move to, to make a change to the law here? Well, that's something Steve McLeod would like to see happen because yeah. he, he wants 
the highest consequences for whoever did this. And, and obviously the investigation is ongoing and someone who's so tech savvy, it's so hard to trace where that came sure. from. But if they knew the name of the stepson, clearly someone knew something and, and, and they're trying to track that down. He would like to see, he wants to see the book thrown at whoever's um, behind this. So, Colin, I know you reached out to Fayetteville Police. Did you get a response? All they'll say at this point is that it's an ongoing investigation, so they're not going to comment specifically. We have been able to get the incident report. We got the the CAD notes uh, that sort of walk you through what happened. Uh, and and they they clearly got the call, and it they were responding because they – we're told by this caller that this person had shot his mother. He was on heroin. He was going to shoot anyone else who who came uh, came there, maybe himself. So they clearly thought this was a very dangerous situation. Absolutely, and maybe something good will come out of this in terms of new protocols. Right, and, and again, this is one thing Steve McLeod made clear. He's like, "Who thinks this is funny?" Uh, I mean, like you said, right. back in the day, the... you know, hey, you got 27 pizzas coming, that kind of thing. But this literally puts people's lives in danger, police and the occupants of the of the house. So it's a very serious situation. Yeah. And I mean, you kind of wonder what is the motive? I mean, what are they getting out of this? Like you said, it's not funny. Um, and not it does all. seem targeted if they did have this person's name, the stepson's name. So, you know. Definitely a lot of layers to this. Absolutely. And, and again, I, I, I think these kinds of cases are going to get more attention. And then how do we deal the, with them down the road to prevent them? Absolutely. Well, Colin, thank you so much for your reporting and your insight into this very important issue. And thank you for listening to the WREL Daily Download and making us part of your morning routine. If you like what you're hearing, please rate us on Apple Podcasts or on whatever podcast app you use. Another great way to get WREL news is the Morning Briefing Newsletter. It's a daily email waiting in your inbox every morning with triangle news, events, and headlines to get you ready for the day. Sign up at WREL.com backslash newsletter.